Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, scripture today will be Acts 27, chapter 27, verse 10 through 11. Uh, men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to the ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Quick backdrop. Um, at this time that Paul is, is saying this, he's on a ship and he's a, and he's a prisoner. He's on his way somewhere in Italy. Um, and he's warning them that there's a storm ahead. And they're telling them, no, it looked pretty sweet out here. You know, everything looked good. But Paul's warning them. There's a storm coming, fellas. You know, we, you know, it ain't looking as sweet as you think it is. And they do what they want to do. And they get into some rough seas and they get into some trouble. And it's just like us in life. When God gives us a, a warning in life, uh, his warning is a is him showing favor. Um, all right. Um, back to the scripture. Sometimes it's it it it's not about you know um, um, you hear God, but what else are you hearing? We hear the word of God pretty often, at least I know I do. And I'm going to use me an example. I I hear God, but there's times that I'm going to do me because maybe come poor, I just get in my own way. And when I think that I know everything and I get in, and I'm doing me, I get into some rough seas. I I, I do. But if I'd have just took heed to God's warning and just say, you know what? Let me seek your guidance. Let me get in your presence. That when that storm does come, I'm prepared for it. I, because at the end of the day, he's not on the other side. He's going to see us through the storms. But we have to be mindful and diligent in, in um, what's the word? Diligent. Diligent. Vigilant. Vigilant, yes. That when his word comes, then we take heed to it. I like to also think that in a physical aspect, that when God gives us a warning and we decide to do our own thing, that in, in a physical sense, I'm pushing past Jesus because I know everything. And when I do that, I can see his face and say, son, I've done it all. Why? Just, just listen to me. And when I get in that space, oh, it breaks my heart. It makes, and, it, and it brings me back. And I just want to dive into him. I want to dive into his word. I want to dive into his presence. So sometimes we need to be vigilant of who we're listening to and what we're listening to. Because what we're listening to is going to affect our outcome. And you can either take heed to the word and be prepared for the storm or you can do your own thing and it's going to crash and life's going to life and what you going to do when life's going to life cut out the word of God you're going to struggle it's going to break your heart it's going to take some things from you but I can tell you this he's the only thing you need tomorrow so he's going to be there waiting on you but it's how we going to get there to him the next day and the next you're going to get there with his word or you're going to get there without his word. I just say that when God sends us a warning that we take heed to it, that we sharpen our listening skills, that we gravitate toward him because when we don't, it's going to be rough. Amen? Amen. 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 Towards offering time and then with the announcements. Amen. Amen.
she gets the, the, the offered bucket. Somebody say give. Give. And it shall be given unto you. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Good measure. Good measure. Press down. Shaking. There will be a there will be an overflow. There will be an overflow. And a lot of times in that transaction, and that is about a transaction, give and it should be given to you. That's what we call a transaction. A lot of times in this transaction, you'll find transformation. That you're able to transform when you when you've applied when you've applied this process of giving, understanding that it will be given unto you. Now a lot of times the it that we think about <coughs> giving unto you, we try to define it because we create the vision. So it's like, I'll give this money, and then we'll say, all right, so now God, your word says that you're going to give money back to me. Well, that's not what mm -hmm. it says. Mm -hmm. It says the it. A lot of times the it is the need that you need that you're not even aware of sometimes that you do need. You understand? A lot of times it, it's, what I found out, it's about my heart posture that God, God deals with our internal man far more than he deals with our external arm. That's not saying that he doesn't, but God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. A lot of times what God gives in this, those type of transactions is to benefit and that your soul postures. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. He puts you in those positions. A lot of times in your being able to give, God connects you to people. You know what I'm saying? And I can just give you in that thing. So when you give, if, if you're giving out of a place of need, listen, God will provide your needs. Okay, according to his riches in glory. There's a different time, type of rich there, okay? So have great expectations concerning your soul prospering as you give in this moment, amen? Yeah. That's part one. Part two is there are needs that God is a, has positioned and postured the family ministry to do in the community. According to Acts 2, 1, in the fellowship of the saints, in the fellowship of people, and loving people and loving your neighbor. So you are an important part of that on how we approach our community and how we love on our community. And because we live in the world, even though we're not of the world, we have to function in this world. So my peaches, I'm so grateful for you because you, you took the lead in us being able to apply ourselves in the community in a very real way. So understand that and the lights have to stay on because that's a requirement in the world system. So when you give, I want you to be aware of those. It, it's more than just you giving and expecting God to put something in your hand, allow him to put it in your heart. And then number two, as a responsible, as someone that is responsible for the word, he says, love God, but then he says, love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So those are the two ways in which we give today, okay? So let those thoughts, those principles govern your heart as you give. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Father God, that you have allowed us to sow into your kingdom, Father. 
we thank you, Father, that we don't take this for granted, that you allow us to place seed into the kingdom of God, that we may be able to pull resources into our home. Father, we thank you that you are a diver, that you always provide for us. And Lord, we bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How you doing today? Everybody good? Yeah. Praise God. How was your study yesterday? Good day. Yeah. Uh, where were you at? In the backyard. Oh, in the backyard? Outside studying the work? Yeah. What were you studying? Um, I was in Peter. Um, Peter. I was looking at when the Lord told him, um, Peter, Peter, um, the, the devil come to, wants to come to sift you and, like and do we, that. And he said, but I pray for you that your faith won't fail. Mm -hmm. that, that's important, right? The devil's coming to shift, the mm -hmm. sift us, right? He's coming to test, right? That, that's his job. Yeah. The, the most important thing was Jesus said, I pray that your faith won't fail, right? Like, like, that that's and he told him to go back to strengthen his brothers. Yeah. That means that he knew that he would get through it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was looking at the steps. Yeah. And then I was like, ooh, he knew he was going to do it. Get through and I noticed it. that he called him Peter. Peter that he didn't call him Peter, he said Simon, Simon, and he changed his name from Simon to Peter, to Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that let him know if the Lord is calling me Peter, something it was so like that warning. So Peter not Peter, Simon. So Peter means rock, mm -hmm. right? And so Simon you, you, you got to understand that when God, like when God spoke to Israel, he spoke to Israel, right, in the times that he called him Jacob, then when he called the nation Jacob, he was really saying, you schemers, you subplanters, right? But when he called them Israel, that, 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 was, that was the name change, right? That, that you are a contender with God, that you are of me, right? And so when, when you see those kind of things in the Bible where, God addresses him one way and then addresses him another way. That there's there's implication behind that. Yeah. You, you know, um, it, it, it's important. It's important. How, how, even how we identify ourselves, yeah. right? Do I identify myself as a Jacob, right? Or, or do I identify myself as an Israel, right? That that I that I strive with God, that I walk with God, that I contend with God. And when I mean contend, not fight against Him. Right, but 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 to be to be of him, to walk with him, right? Or am I Jacob? Am I always scheming? Am I always subplanting? Am I always uh, uh, replacing one thing for another? For example, when when I was trying to stop smoking weed, I picked up cigarettes. Hated cigarettes, right? But I had this aversion. I had this aversion that I wanted to, to smoke. And so because I had the aversion, oh, what did I do? I, I subplanted one for the other, and so. When God says schemer and supplanter, when he calls him Jacob, right? Schemer and supplanter, what he's really saying is, is, is what are you putting in place of me? Mm. Right? What, what are we putting in place of God, right? And so it, it's important to make sure that um, this, right, this thing is, is working right. Because this thing ain't working right, <laughs> right? You're you going to make all kinds of improvise, improvise, improv Improvisation. Yeah. Improvisation. Improvisation. Yeah. Improvisation. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? That we we give this apology to God that we live a life of of a uh, apology that I live a life of repentance, right? And and does that mean perfect? No, we, I, I don't I don't think that's capable of any anyone's capable of being perfect other than Christ. And right? He was the only one that to be able to achieve. But but at the end of the day, like we we should strive for this perfection. We we should strive and work at right. And and here here's here, here's the the problem, right? Like we know we know where we missed the mark. And what kind of excuses do we come up with to continue in, in a particular behavior, right? And 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 I and, and I don't think anyone's exempt. I think we all do it. Um, that was tight, you know, but it's true. Yeah, because because the, what we like to say is they made me do it, right? That person made me. If they would have done this, I would have did that. And 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 the problem is is your your response is in you. No one's responsible for your response but you, right? Because there's someone that can get cussed out and not worry about it at all. And there's other people that can get cussed out, right, and have to respond. Not not you. I'm just looking at you, babe. <laughs> but for instance, I'm, I'm coming to church today. There's a dude I know. He's parked on, on North Street. He's parked with this truck, and he's standing outside of it, outside the truck. And I say to him, Sir, and he looks up at me, I said, you're not supposed to be parked here. And he starts laughing, and we shake hands. Well, the person behind us starts banging on the warrant, and then leans out the window and cusses him out. It didn't bother me, right? <coughs> because I knew him. But what if I didn't know him? What did it bother me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, 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 like th this is the thing, right? Do, do we make excuses because we know the person? But he wasn't blocking my path, but he was going to block some, someone's path. And so, and so it's important. Um, and so, and so it's important. Right? It, it's important that that this mindset, right, that we are mindful of our walk, that we are mindful of our actions, <coughs> that we are mindful of uh, disposition, right? Because, because, because here, here's the kicker. Your achievements in a moment, me riding up the hill, could be my same failure later. And so, and so based on the fact that it didn't bother me, is it because I knew him? Right? Because, because, because have you ever been in a situation? Oh, oh, I got one. Two weeks ago, this dude cuts me off. I'm like, yo, when I pull up to him, there's somebody I know. And we both went like that to each other and laughed. It bothered me until I realized I knew him, mm -hmm. right? It bothered me until I realized I knew him, and I gave him a pass. Well, what I gave, him, gave given a stranger the same pass, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like, like conditions shouldn't alter what's right and wrong. Yeah. Uh, are y'all riding with me, mm -hmm. yeah. right? The, the condition that I knew him and that we were cool, because what if I, I would have known him and it was somebody I didn't like, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Not you, Pastor. There's, got to be, there's no one in the world that you don't like. Lies. Right? We get what's familiar a pass. Sometimes we give what's familiar a pass. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's the truth. Mm. It's the truth. Like, like, uh, uh, and, and sometimes, and sometimes, babe, uh, when a stranger becomes familiar with you, they feel like they can say anything they want. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I and I don't and I don't know how to separate that boundary of a stranger becoming familiar with me. I, I don't I don't know how to have that invisible wall to to allow someone distance that needs distance. I, I think I allow everyone into that space, and and when you allow everyone into that space. You you get hurt, but 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 the reason why I do let people into that space is because I want to give you a chance to fail and recover, because 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 the mark of friendship, uh, the mark of relationship, is not in when it's done, it's it's in the failure, right? That if you can fail me, and then bounce back and recover well, then I know I know that 
this relationship means something to you, right? Mm -hmm. I have the problem with that every relationship means something to me, every single one, right? And, I, and, and this is a problem, and the reason why it's a problem is because I, I put myself in a position to always get dis uh, let down, to be disappointed, and to get hurt, right? And but But I've also gained a lot of relationships because I allow myself to be in this position. And so it, it's a catch-22. Are you willing to sacrifice yourself, right, for relationships, for relationships of other people, right? Are you willing to put yourself in um, unfavorable conditions um, in order to gain some? Paul, Paul said it this way. The Bible said, he said that I became all things to all men that I may win some, not all, mm -hmm. to win some, right? And so, and so, Learning how to adapt to different people and to different situations is a gift, but that gift can come along with pain. I, I don't, I don't want to say curse because I, I don't think God gives gifts to curse. I think he gives gifts to, to, to gain. Um, but, but from the human side, especially as life just keeps getting worse, right? Humanity just keeps getting worse. That... Um, when you put yourself in this position, you, you won't get hurt. But is it because of your expectations of them? I expect everyone to fail me. Okay. I do. I expect every single person to fail me, right? When, when, when I can have a 31-year relationship with this woman and um, she has failed me, but her recovery means more, mm -hmm. right? Right? And, and and vice versa, right? I, I, I don't know who's failed who the most. But 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 when you expect people to fail you, right? Um it's not as bad. Or when you allow yourself to not expect failure out of someone, that's when it hurts the most. Mm -hmm. That's when it hurts the most. Be because, because I can remember my first sermon. I, I said, don't put me on a pedestal. I'm going to fail you. I may disappoint you, and I may hurt you, right? And so and so, give me space to recover from that. I, that was the very first sermon we was in the hotel. Like, I'm going to fail you. Don't put me on a pedestal. I'm not God. I'm going to fail you. I'm going to disappoint you, and, and, and I'm going to make you mad, right? Uh, like, that's just... That's just human nature, and vice versa, and, and vice versa <laughs> right? And 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 as pastor, um, I don't think people think that I get disappointed or hurt, right? Or or upset or let down, right? And um, there's an expectation I have because there's an expectation that you have, right, of me, right? And if I don't hold that expectation. There's some side conversations that go on. There's a lot of side conversations that go on when it comes to pastor. But how dare me, right, have that same conversation when I'm disappointed. And, and so what you have to understand is, is that, that relationships are always um, two ways, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? I, I, when you say that, no one can fail me as much as I fail me. Mm -hmm. Here's my perspective mm -hmm. of all that. Because I failed me so much, and if it had not been for God's grace and mercy, I could have missed out what would have, could have, should have. Mm -hmm. And so my perspective of everyone is that we all have the ability to fail. Right. And so therefore, mine is a place of prayer and grace towards people in general, because no one can fail. Like, man, in the earth, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, but, 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 but there's a guard that goes up. This is a good conversation. Let's, let's, let's start here. Good. There's a guard that goes up when, when someone's failed you to pain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, like when, when, when there's pain involved, when, when, when you have given yourself to someone, you've given your heart to someone, right? And this could be male, male, not, not that kind of male, male, but like friendship male, right? And, and when you give your heart to somebody like that and they, and they, and they hurt you, right? Then all of a sudden... The view is skewed. It's very hard to get to a place where I don't view you in a skewed way anymore. 
It takes time. It takes healing. Yep. Right? Right? Yep. Listen, and sometimes the healing's one way. Yep. Right? The one person goes on and, and doesn't acknowledge that they hurt you. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a quiet, unspoken conversation that goes on between you two that may happen in the eyes. Right? It may happen in body language in the eyes, but it never happens verbally. And you have to either be Christ-like and say, okay, I'm willing to have this relationship again, right? Regardless, of, because, because this is what this is conversations that happen on Facebook, right? Conversations that happen on Facebook is, do you have to have relationships with toxic people? Not, that, not identifying your own toxicity, right? Hey, you remember, like, when you say that, and, and like you covered me because recently it's been some things and I could not recover from it and I wasn't recovering well from it but in our fellowship in our understanding because we've gone through things you were able to cover me in a sense that you held me accountable in love to fix that you know what I'm saying in my trust in what we've been through and our experiences I was able to say okay well, I saw you. Yeah. I, I, I saw I saw I saw body language. I saw movement when I first came home. Mm -hmm. Right? And I said, and, and you know, the conversation went, yo, I saw that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to say go fix it. Uh -huh. I just said, I just acknowledged, yo, I saw what you did. Uh -huh. Right? And and he said, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was hurt. Mm -hmm. Right? When when you have people when and 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 when you have people sit at your table and break bread with you and eat with you and there's camaraderie and you show up for them and blah, 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 and then all of a sudden, because because you're viewed here and not here, right? This is what happens in church. People view leadership here when when, when it should be viewed here, right? Like, like because God, God is still holding me accountable on the same level that he's holding you accountable yeah. on. But people like to throw us up here. And so when, when, there, when, when that happens, right, the fall is not to the same plane that you're on. The fall in the other people's eyes are is way down here, mm -hmm. right? And so and so now I gotta work my way back to your plane. Mm -hmm. And not only do I have to work my way back to your plane, I gotta work my way back to your expectation of me. Listen, I refuse to allow you to put me way up here. Mm -hmm. I, I just I, I I won't let you. I won't let you do that, right? I won't let you, right? Give me a false. Viewpoint. I'm human, right? right? And 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 the only person that can hold me accountable to that way that way is God, right? And and that one that moved from my right to the left, yeah. right? <laughs> she has a very high expectation of me, right? And when I fail, she's on my neck. She's on my neck in a very uh, loving way. Yeah, but but her love hurts sometimes. No, it's just the rest. Oh. <laughs> you can't you can't discount you can't you can't discount my feelings. It hurts sometimes. I know you love me, but but the but but your approach sometimes, right? Like you say about me, my because approach. My expectation. That's why right. you and who I know you are and and how not the pastor though. No. Right. See this is what I'm getting at. Who I know you are as a man. Period. Right. Right. Um Sometimes my expectation. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Say that part again. Guys. Bring that beat back. <laughs> my expectation of you and what I and what I know that you know. Mm -hmm. What I know that you know makes me sometimes be like, come on, man, because I know you know, mm -hmm. and I know you know better, or right. I know you know how. Right. And it's like. Okay, don't, what I always say, don't teach me all this Bible if you don't want me to use it. But we all need someone that can pull our coattail. Pull our coattail yeah. when it, because you do the same thing, like pull our coattail when it needs to be pulled. Like if I didn't 110% love you or care about you and your tomorrow, I would just let you be out here and do whatever, but that's not the case. And is right. it is it what is being said that hurts, or is it the truth of what you're hearing that mm -hmm. really hurts? Sometimes, 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 sometimes it's both. both. I just wanted to right. Know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's both. the truth. Like like the truth hurts sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Right. And and and. But you'll feel better in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you will feel better in the morning, you'll right? Feel better in the and, morning. And 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 it's like, you, you know, here's the defense mechanism, right? I can remember saying this to her. Oh, you, 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 you're not my friend. 
you're my wife, but you're not my friend. I said that to you a couple months ago, right? But 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 she was coming to me as my wife, right? But because I was hurt, right? Be because I was hurt, my defense mechanism was, oh, you're my wife, but you don't know how to be my friend, right? And 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 that was just the. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a step yeah. on yeah. Give me some room. Yeah. Back up off me a little bit. I've been more of a friend than your friend. Right, right, yeah. exactly. You've been more of yeah. a friend than my friend. Yeah. But that was a step on, right? Like, like, back up. Come on. Could, could the Lord be using her as, part, as a part of the pruning process? Always. Yeah. She's my helpmate. Wife, wife has hurt a little bit. Yeah. Always. And what's important? A good you? wife will always <laughs> be about a part of the pruning process. Well, mm. The important thing is and I've learned this over the years, is a lot of times something that I might say, I can maybe sometimes see on your face you know I'm telling the truth, or you, I just know you know I'm telling you what's right, and I will we'll just go on, and I'll you'll either come back around later and say, you know, babe. Or you'll you come back around something? again. No, or, <laughs> even if, or even if you don't verbally acknowledge, you might show me in your actions yeah that you grab what I said and you know to switch some things up or whatever. And what's important, wives or husbands, is that you don't always have to say, I told you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, just let their changed behavior or, or whatever be the only thing that you need. Like, it's not up to me to, I'm not his mother. But but you know what, this, this, is, this, this is where, this is where, like, Something may happen to me that I don't like, and I and and I may not have responded to the person, but I tell her how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Like 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 she's so dialed in to um, how I function, mm -hmm. right? That when I tell her how it made me feel, she may be standing there and she she's like this, right, mm -hmm. listening, and she'll go. <laughs> I spoke a million words, right? right? Like you didn't handle that right at all. But I didn't even say. But, but listen, it wasn't me didn't handle it right with the person. I didn't handle it right within myself. Right. Mm -hmm. see, 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 because 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 it doesn't matter what the person saw. Yeah. The person may have saw. Okay, I don't want. I don't want to go through that with you. Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> but what she saw was. Do you know blah 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 and 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 when I when I at the moment that I go off, mm -hmm. she goes down, yeah. and 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 this is God. This this is what you want in your life. Yeah. You want someone to not cosign everything that you do, mm -hmm. right? Because because check this out. God's not really looking at your actions. He's looking at the heart behind yeah. your actions. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're if you're I don't want to go through that. Praise the Lord is genuine. Mm -hmm. Then bravo, but it, but if it's not genuine, God God knows it. There's nothing that we can hide from Him, and so because there's nothing that we can hide from Him, like like the heart of the matter is really the issue. It, it's 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 the soul behind what you're doing, um, and, and so you you know, the only time she she if someone really hurts me, she may be ready, you know. Y'all, y'all ever see? Y'all ever see? <laughs> you ever see that meme where the guy got his hands behind his head, but she got his hands on his gun behind his back? Yeah. That that that's her. That's her. She, don't hurt me too much. No doubt. No doubt. Don't hurt me too much. Praise the Lord. All right, come on, come on. We we spent enough time here. Y'all go, make your times longer to have conversations with me. Y'all. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> y'all. So he, he that bears much fruit, right? This is important. Like, like, not only do we go to church, not only do, do, do we believe in God, but, but there's something that's happening. There, there's a change that's going on. There's something that's happening. There's something that's, that, that is being um, uh, poured out of me, right? There's something that I'm willing to give back to the kingdom of God, right? And, and so, and so, this is not this is not like service in a way to like I'm preaching. This is not service in a way where I'll, I'll usher or I'll work the sound and 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 the can't. This is not that kind of fruit. This is individualized, right? Think about what we've been talking about: the vine, 
The vine produces many branches. Each branch is, is, is expected to produce fruits. Everything that comes out is supposed to come out in clumps, right? We're talking about grapes. Everything's supposed to come out in clumps, right? And so you are the only one that can examine what kind of fruit is being produced from your life, right? There, there is no one else that is peeking in your window but God. There is no one sitting beside you but Holy Spirit. And so just because you see me posting a, a, a video clip every day, does that mean that I'm living a godly life? No, no, right? Only one that knows that is God, right? Mm -hmm. And so and so it's important, right, that abide in me and I in you. Like, like we just can't get past this, right? God, God, God didn't say, I'm going to abide in you. You abide in me. No, Christ said, listen, you come here. And if you come here, I'll stay here with you, right? I'll ride this thing out for you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. And also what I want you to remember, what I want you to remember, just because you call yourself Christian doesn't mean anything. Because the few verses back, Jesus says, every branch in me mm -hmm. that does not bear fruit, he, pr he cuts it. This is not the pruning process. Mm -hmm. it, you, you're, no, you're, you're faking. You are faking. So, so this tells me that there's, there's parts of him, there's parts of the body, there's a part of believers that are not willing to be who they say they are authentically when no one's looking, right? When the, listen, we wouldn't even be here if I wasn't an authentic Christian, not an authentic pastor, preacher, right? Because she would expose me. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she does, right? Yeah, you know, we have right. moments. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to play with that. Abide in me. Why are we not going to play with God? Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me, though, y'all. For real. That's good that you said that. Mm -hmm. Who are you fooling? Us? Mm -hmm. Are you, you you're fooling your pastor? You're fooling that you're a good Christian? Mm -hmm. Right? You're, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. Because that's it. Man, God, man, God, man, God is just like, hello, I'm here. Right? <laughs> Except and abide in the vine, no more can you accept you abide in me, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so, so listen. So listen. When, when you say that I'm a believer, when you say that I'm a Christian, what are the very first things that come to your mind? What's the, somebody, what's the very first thing that comes to your mind? That, listen, fruit-wise, what is supposed to be produced from my life? Love. Okay, give me another one. Long suffering. Okay, give me another one. Huh? Patience, peace. Give me another one. Huh? Joy. Okay, so, so check this out. These things are a byproduct of being in Him. How do you maintain the garden? Pruning it. Pruning it. Okay? Watering. Okay, okay. So, what does that mean when it comes to Christian activity? How do you water your life? Stay in your word. The word. Yeah. All right. So, so worship, application, prayer, yeah. fellowship, right? Right? These are church things, right? Is reading the word church thing? No. 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 That's a life thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see what I mean? Fellowship's a church thing, right? How are you going to maintain peace and joy that is imputed to you? Imputed means laid to your account. That when Holy Spirit comes to you, he gives you this stuff. He, he, it's the fruit of what? The Spirit. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So love, peace, joy, kindness, meekness, gentleness, right? All these things are a byproduct of him being in your life. He's going to give it to you, but how are you going to hold on to it? How are you, how are you going to hold on to this thing? Because without holding on to it, you won't see peace. You won't see joy. You won't see love, right? So if this is the case, how do you hold on to it without the word? How do you hold on? Man, how do you hold on to it without God's word in your life? Somebody. You can't. You can't. You can't. Why not? Because it says abide in me and I in you. So how are you abiding if you're not in the word? Right. Mm -hmm. How are you abiding if you're not in the word, right? Amen. How are you abiding if you're not in the word? If you're not reading the Bible, right? What are you coming up with? Your own concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or someone else's concept. Or somebody else's concept. Right? 
L listen, listen. The Bible is so alive, right, that I can read something in 2015 and read it again. Just like I caught this week, right? John 15 is one of my favorite uh, um, scriptures in the whole Bible, right? My favorite verse is in there. But then when I find out every branch in me, like when I saw that, that thing jumped off the table to me. And I've been walking with God for 20 years. And, and, and that was one of the first, this chapter was one of the first chapters that made me cry, right, early in my walk. But I missed that. 20 years later, I'm reading it again, and he says, every branch in me that does not produce, he cuts it away. <clears throat> Trash. Like, 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 I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. And so if this is the case, if this is the case, then there, 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 there has to be some maintenance in my own life, right? And so a continual relationship with Christ means a continual relationship with his word. Continual. You can never get to the point where you think, I know the word, I don't need to read it. I've been reading this book for 20 years, right? Why do I need to read it anymore? Why do I go to it every morning? The reason why I go to it every morning is because I have a relationship with God and I expect to, to hear something out of his word every day. Amen. I expect, listen, listen, just think, think about how vast the Bible is. Just take one book of the book of Proverbs and how it just changes from topic to topic to topic to topic to topic. It all in one proverb, right? And then you go out in life and that thing comes and that proverb jumps out at your life to hold you, to keep you, to make sure that you respond the right way, that you live the right way, that you do the right thing, yeah. right? Like, 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 it's important because if you're not having a relationship with the word, you're out of order. Yeah. You're out of order, Amen. right? Like, 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 he's purposed everyone that believes to have a relationship with him, and the first relationship you have with him is in his word. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, yep. right? And so this suggests that the fruit of the vine's imagery represents everything that is in the product of effective prayer in Jesus' name, including obedience to Jesus' commands, experience of Jesus' joy, love for one another, and witness to the word. How, how important is it, this is going to be good, the relationship you have with the people that you go to church with? And do you have a relationship with people that you go to church with other than me? You should have. You should. You should. You should. You should. I mean, because I mean, you know, they they all they all uh, you're saints. They all the saints, and they all striving for the same the same goal. Yeah. I mean, you saw you read your Bible, sir. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, keep going. Y'all, you all striving for the same thing to be Christ-like. So I mean, and when you mingle amongst each other, I mean, this this is when you come together and be together. So you should, uh, because there's strength in numbers. That's right. The strength in numbers. That's so right. If if you all are the same and you all striving for the same thing, then I don't see the reason why you should be communicating with each other and knowing each other. And I mean, it, it's, it's mingling with each other. So so, so think about this. But but think about this. We don't bring our issues and problems and dump them into the body. We take our issues and problems and keep them from the body and take it to people who are not a part of the body. And work out and work out life problems. We work out life problems with people outside of the bio, body, right? And, or they all come to me or him. All of them come to us, right? You don't trust each other enough to have mingling in the pews to conversate with one another, to pray for one another, right? You don't have that. The trust that, ha that happens in the body is, is almost gone. And so because there's no trust there, you have this expectation of trust when it comes to me. And so because you have an expectation, because you're the pastor, all of it comes to me. And that's fine. I'm here to serve you. That's what I'm for. But you also go to people outside the body to get a second opinion, mm -hmm. Right? You go to the quack doctor. <laughs> you go to the doctor, then you go to the quack doctor. That's right. That's right. Right? And listen, most of the time, the people outside the body give you something that's so reasonable that you run with that, but let the pastor know that you ran with his. And then I have to keep coming back 
dealing with the same issue because you won't take Bible advice and you keep taking world advice, right? Come on, let's, let's get it, let's get it. The fruit is nothing less than the outcome of preser preserving dependence on the vine, persevering dependence on the vine. The fruit is nothing less than the outcome of persevering dependence on the vine. Like, 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 li listen to me, listen to me. If the branches are a part of the vine, that means that we're all in this thing together. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's important to understand like, 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 building relationships in the body of Christ are the most vital relationships you can have. Like, like, you have to find people that you can trust. You have to find people that you can spend time with. You have to find people of like precious faith, right? And, and, and a lot of times what we find are people that are like-minded and not like faith. And so like-minded, right, listen, hurt people hurt people. Ain't that what they say, right? And so, and so if we don't find people of like precious faith, we keep running to hurt people, right? And hurt people allowing us to mingle our pain instead of mingling our faith, right? You need somebody to talk you off a cliff instead of running and jumping off the cliff with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on. But, driven by faith, embracing all the believer's life and the product of his witness. So Psalms 1. Hey, hey, Pat, how you doing? Psalms 1, right? Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Here, here it is, right? Here it is. We, we, we just said, right, that we run to the world for advice instead of finding someone in the church that you can build a relationship with, right? So blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. Like, are you going to keep getting your counsel out there, or are you going to find somebody in the church that is growing, right? Not necessarily me, right? And I'm fine with it. Don't, tell, don't think I'm pushing you away. That's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to increase the relationship that you have in fellowship, right? So it says, bless the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. Like, 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 like you have to get to the point where you find someone you can trust. And listen, when someone comes to you, you have to be trustworthy. You don't take their stuff and start running in the street and, and running your mouth. Yo, there's this girl I go to church with. Like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, and so, nor sit up in the seat of the scornful. Right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something. The reason why they go back to the worldly friends instead of the yeah. church friends is because the worldly friends understand the relationship. They understand the camaraderie. And so because they understand the camaraderie, they treat that person because there's a friendship there instead of a bond of fellowship. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The bond of fellowship it should be way stronger than the bond of friendship. Right? Listen, we always talk about blood is thicker than water, right? That's what we say. Well, but what it really means is the, the listen, the, the 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 water of the womb is not the blood, the, the blood of the covenant is not thicker than the water of the womb. So what that tells me is, what this tells me is, is that if my sister, right, is wrong and my blood covenant with him in Christ is stronger, I'd rather go to him than to my sister. Mm -hmm. Right? If, 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 if me and my sister coming out of the same womb and she don't know how to keep her trap shut, right? And she runs and tells my business where he will lock it down because of our relationship in Christ, I'll come to him first before I go to her. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, right? So, so listen, he says, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in his word, right? Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The more words you get, the more counsel, the less counsel you need. The more words you get, because God will begin to counsel you through his word. The less you have to depend on me. The more you grow up in this thing, the less you need counsel, right? Holy Spirit will be there, right? The Holy Spirit will be there to counsel you. And the reason why is, is because you're open to it. A lot of times you're not open to it because you won't go to the word and you won't spend the time in the word. You have to spend time in his word. You have to build a relationship with God. You have to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise, right? Listen, he says, and his law do if he meditate day and night. The reason why is because you're so full of the word, you have no choice. The word just keeps reintroducing yourself. You go to make a right turn, you look at something, the word says, boom, oh, don't turn. Right? You go to look at something, listen, listen. There's you, there's your worldly counsel, there's your life experiences, and all that wrapped up, and then you got God, Holy Spirit, and the word. Right? Really all one. Really all one thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, so you had this. Whatever's strongest, 
your trauma, your life experiences, your worldly counsel, and what you really desire? Do I desire to fulfill God's law, word, way of life, or do I, or do I want to desire what I've already experienced? When, when that, so when the situation presents itself, who are you going to listen to? Whatever one's stronger. Your soul is going to lean to whatever's stronger, right? And so because your soul is going to lean to whatever's stronger, you got a choice to make. Do I listen to God? And how can I listen to God if I don't know what he expects, right? Like, like, like coming to church and hearing me is great. Don't stop. Keep on coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? But what you hear from God is so much more important. It's so much more important. Like, 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 like a sermon can get you to a place, but the word will excel your life. Amen. 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 Pastor, I have something to say about Come on. friends. So, like, for me, like, I will go to, like, I have a, a one friend in particular where they know me for so long. So I go because I'm like, you know me and you know who I am. You know who I've changed to be in Christ. But. Now that you're saying this, I'm like, OMG, they, they're in my mind, there's certain things where I'm like, you know my, you know my routine behavior. So I'm going to ask you this. But then in the back of my mind, I still sit there because I'm just like, I have to be filtered, filtered, filtered while they're speaking because I'm like, I'm still here too because I want you to keep following Christ. I want you to follow Christ. So I still have to like literally filter everything that's going, but that's being said because I may not get I, I, most likely I won't get a biblical answer but when you're speaking I'm like OMG it should be biblical <coughs> over but I'm valuing the longevity of the friendship so, so, but so, now my sister Jade uh -huh. me and her have conversation and we speak about the Lord and now when I look at that because she's known me for longer than the other girl has known me mm -hmm. but when we have those conversations we go to the Bible and it is very much different right. and I don't sit there and I don't fill that filter I feel so, so so let me add this. Right. My best friend before he died, right? He knew me better than anyone. He knew he knows things about me that my wife don't doesn't know, right? And and it's like I would go to him and we would have conversations and there was always a deep understanding. Mm -hmm. But it was never a God understanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? It was never a God understanding. And as humans we want deep understanding. We want someone that understands me, right? Because you know why? There's leadway there. There's leadway for your feelings. There's leadway for your sin. There's leadway for your perspective. When you go to someone that's going to give you God's, it's direct, it's instructional. There's no leadway. It points. The friend allows. God stops and points. And this is the difference. This is the difference, right? Because, because we want, I just want somebody to understand me, right? That's what we go for. We go for understanding because we're crying on the inside. And so because we're crying on the inside, that person that may not know God that knows you, right? Well, listen, this is what we just talked about with me and my wife, right? I can't go to her and get leeway. <laughs> she just said, you can't teach me all this Bible and then expect me to just give you leeway. <laughs> And it's not going to happen that way. What I'm going to give you are, are the same instructions you gave everybody else out of the book, right? And so, and so, and so, do you get godly counsel or do you get friendly counsel? And the Bible doesn't talk about friendly counsel; it talks about godly counsel. And so, and so, you have to make a choice. What am I going to listen to? Do I want a shoulder to cry on, or do I want to excel out of this situation? Right? Do I want do I want to overcome this situation or do I just want a pity party? Right? Because when we go to friends that will not give us Bible, we're gonna get a pity party. Mm -hmm. Right? Matter of fact, they might join us. Mm -hmm. Right? They might, yo, what you want me to do to them? <laughs> right? Because, because, because in the world we have this thing. If I if you don't like them, I don't like them either. So, so, so that tells me, that tells me if he was an atheist and I'm a believer, so because you don't believe in God, I'm, I'm not going to believe in God either. No. Like, like, come on, right? Nah. And as Christians, as Christians, we, we ride with this, 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 this foolish mentality, right? Christians do this, right? 
And, and your worldly friends will cut you off because you're friends with somebody. Right? But the blood of the covenant mm. is thicker than the water of the womb. Amen. And some covenant relationships will last a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And some of them, and some of those sandbox relationships will be severed because of Christ. Yeah. He said it, right? Mm -hmm. Father and son will be separated. Mother and daughter will be separated, right? He said that these things will happen because of a belief system, right? And so, and so you got to choose. Am I going to choose him or am I going to choose me? Because at the end of the day, when you choose a friend, you're really just choosing you. Mm -hmm. The loneliness. The human loneliness that comes along with this walk with God, right? And this is why I'm trying to tell you that that when you build a fellowship relationship, like 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 the reason why it's lonely is because you haven't made God friends, right? You haven't built trust in anyone else because the world the world has damaged us, right? And so because the world has damaged us. Right? I can trust you, Pastor, because God trusts you enough to give you the title. Mm. But I can't trust anyone else. <laughs> and, and if we've been sitting in this room for a year together and you have not built a relationship with anyone else but me, think about this. Think about this. Like, you go to church with these people. When are you going to ask somebody to go to coffee with you? And if y'all don't, you know, if y'all don't mesh, like, that person was a little goofy for you. It's okay. <laughs> Find somebody else. You might be goofy to them too. Y'all can be just goofy together. <laughs> Come on. Let's get into this Colossians, right? Listen, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Mm -hmm. This is where I was going. This is why I'm telling you this, right? He said, Paul saying this. He says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before the word, the word of the truth of the gospel. He's saying, listen, this love, this hope, this faith is because you have a relationship with the word, right? Because you had a relationship with the word. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints. The language used in this scripture is not based on Christians worldwide. Right? He's not talking about the people worldwide. What he was talking about were the people that were in the community, in the nearby cities, right? Mm. Because because a city was a church sometimes. Like, yeah. the church was the whole city. Well, not the whole city. Don't get me. The, listen, there was one church in one city. Let me put it that way, right, right? right? But then in the nearby city, there may be another church, right? He's saying the Greek intends to identify the Christians that are in close by cities and traveling Christians, the ones that are coming through. This means proximity. Like, like, like we, we heard of how you treat the people in proximity that are believers. Like, like, like this is important. This is important. He said, before you save the world, you, you, you just dealing with the people that are, are coming across your path. Like there's a love that you have for the people of God. The Bible says this, do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith, Amen. especially those of the household of faith. Right. And so, and so we get so selfish in this word, right, in this life, that we come to church by ourselves and we leave and go back to the world. We come to church, we get a little bit, then we go back to the world. When are you going to leave the church and stay in the church? Mm -hmm. Right? When are you going to act like you called out? When are you going to abide? Mm. Right? And not just operate because I have a faith in God, but I have fruit from God. Mm -hmm. Right? Is this where we're going? This, in, this indicates that people that are in your proximity are extremely important. Before we can take the world by storm, we have to take care of the body. My son, I just said that. The Church of Colossae understood, understood the importance of praying for one another. Paul starts his letter by affirming the Colossians' faith in Christ and their love for all God's people. He highlights the impact of the gospel in their lives and acknowledges their spiritual growth. If you can't measure your walk, Right? Listen, the, the, the mark of measurement when it comes to a Christian walk is what you don't fall subject to when it comes to sin. Let me say that again? Yes, yes. How you measure your Christian walk is what you overcome. Did I say that? Mm. No, I didn't. I can't say it again. 
what you overcome when it comes to sin. I can say that part. And this, this is, this is, this is it. This is it. You can't overcome without the word. Yeah. Correct. There's nothing checking you. Pastor's not there to check you. The church is not there to check you. There's nothing there to check you. And listen, Holy Spirit's there, but you, if you don't have a relationship with him, you don't. Yep. People have more of a relationship with going to church, and this is a great place to start. It's not a great place to finish, right? Because there's going to come a time when you get old and you might not make it to the church, mm. right? You might not make it. Say it well. But you're going to need God. As long as there's breath in your body, you're going to need God, Yeah. right? And so, and so you build, it says serve God in your youth. But like, like, sir, sir, say that again. Remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy youth. Woo! The evil days come not, mm. nor the years draw. Speak up, say it loud, please. The scripture says, Remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy youth, while thy evil days come not, nor the years come not, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in the world. Oh, you know that, Joe. You know that scripture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know that one, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so mm-hmm. praying for one another produces fruit, right? Praying for one another produces fellowship and unity. Prayer fosters fellowship and unity among believers. When a church prays for each other, they demonstrate their care and concern for one another's spiritual well-being. Yeah. Right? Like, like you two probably pray for each other, right? Let me ask you a question. Who prays for me? Okay. Right? Now, you have consistently. I said I have, but have I consistently? That's the question. Okay. But do you pray for one another? Yes. Yes. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, do you pray for one another? I pray for the church as a whole. Okay. And <clears throat> my thing is, I, I would like to pray for every individual that, that's in here. That's right. But I pray for the church as a whole because I don't I don't see myself and I don't see them enough to, that I would like to pray for them. Right. Uh, you know, and, and literally, but, you know, again... So, so let me ask you a question. This is good. This is good. This is good. Would you be willing to have small groups <coughs> that bring you out of your comfort zones during the week mm-hmm. where you start meeting for coffee, three or four of you together? Yeah. Name your little group, you know, your little clique. <laughs> Ain't supposed to have clicks in the church. Well, I want them. That's good. That's good. That's good. We started a small group before and it was working, right? <coughs> Listen, this practice strengthens the bond of community and encourages members to support each other in their walk with Christ. Yeah. It encourages it, right? Not, o- not only this, but then you invite people to your small group, not necessarily church. Let, a- let them get a taste of your life, right? Yeah. Let them get a taste of your life because it's important. Yeah. It's important to, 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 to have this fellowship in unity. Look at this. Yeah. Spiritual growth. Prayer, prayer. Prayer plays a vital role in spiritual growth. By lifting each other up in prayer, believers can intercede for one another's needs, challenges, and spiritual development. This collective support helps individuals overcome obstacles, deepen their faith, and mature in their relationship with God. Like, do you think that Sunday's enough? No. No. Huh? Come on. I was going to say, like, one thing that I'm learning with uh, Bible Study Hall is that we're now to the place where we've done it consistently enough to where we are building those intimate relationships where anyone will come in and drop a question and be like, hey, this is where I'm struggling. Like, or this is where I don't, have, I don't have understanding. And we all come together in that space, all eight, 10 of us, and we just dig down into it. Who's um, the next one? Uh, actually, this Saturday, coming up. Next, this Saturday, right? Come on. Encouragement and edification. Prayer provides a platform for encouragement and edification within the church. When members pray for each other, they offer words of affirmation, comfort, and hope. This builds up the body of Christ. Like, 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 like what, mo- what usually happens is someone outside the church comes and you and you give them church, which is great, right? But but you would be shocked that what comes across my desk how many people really need help. Mm. And they just, listen, listen, look look at each other. Not the people that you come with, but look at each other. Y'all don't trust each other. 
Y'all don't trust each other. And this is important. As, as, as believers, like, like you should be able to trust another believer. And there are people that don't believe in your God that you trust. Like, 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 like I want to be able to trust you as pastor, to be vulnerable enough, right? Where, where, where I don't have to spend two or three hours on the phone with him just dumping on him constantly about what, what's going on in my life because I can't trust you. Then I got to go to another pastor, right, and give it to him when, when this is who I spend my time with the most. Like this, this is, come on, Alima. All right, so, but also, and this is going to bring this up, you know, the church also is for broken people, right? And not everybody is at that maturity level or where they are, where they could possibly be trusted with everything. So, I mean, you have to have wisdom in whom you can confide in and who you do trust because everyone's on a different path. Everybody's at a different stage in their walk. You're, you're exactly right, but you know what brings us all to the same maturity level? The word. word. The word. This the word. is it, right? Like, 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 to, to, to and, and you're right, right? You're right. Everyone's not at the maturity level, but when, when, when you, when you live this, what I'm getting at is living this for real, yes. right? When you live this for real, yes. you'll, you'll, you'll reach a place of knowledge, you'll reach a place of wisdom, you'll reach a place of understanding. You'll reach a place of compassion. You'll, you'll, you'll reach so many different levels inside of yourself that you didn't know that, that were in you, right? But as a believer, everything that is in God is already forged in you. Every gift, every, every fruit, everything that God is God is in you. You have to now take the opportunity to develop it within yourself, to submit to God. This is what this is about, that we yield to God. We yield to his ways. We yield to his understanding. We yield to his way of doing things. We yield to God. And as we yield to God, all this stuff starts swelling up on the side of us, changing our perspectives, changing our ideology, now fixing us into a place to where I can handle your truth and hold it and put it under a lock and key. And then we can go and fellowship over coffee and have this thing and work this thing out with each other. Amen. You know, like when you say that, you're like, this is so important. Those that have been coming to Bible study, what you're teaching right now is at the basis of where we're at in this. And, and this is like the example. We was in Acts 2 1, and we look at this 40 day period, this 50 day period from Jesus' resurrection where he told them, don't move. And we came to the revelation that he told them, no, don't move from this place because he needed them to fellowship. Amen. There was so much argument and fussing and fighting going on before this time. The moment that they became on one accord, then the Holy Spirit moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He responded to them being in one accord and in one place. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom of this is get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Get through your hurts and your troubles. Work this thing out, which is what they did. And they did it without Christ being there with them for the first time. Because he walked with them for three years. But now all of a sudden they got to be in the same room, in the same space. Well, but what you have to understand is, is that when someone comes to you, there's a responsibility that you have. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a responsibility that you have now to help and not harm. Yes. Right? And if you're immature, tell the person, I can't handle this. Yeah. I'm going to go run and tell your business. Mm -hmm. Be mature enough to say that. Wow. Yeah. Be mature enough to say, you know what? I'm going to Facebook with your stuff, and, and mm -hmm. I'm not mature enough to handle it. Mm -hmm. That's real. Mm -hmm. Because you do more damage, man. A person's coming to you for help, right? And, and, and you don't have the maturity level to lock it down mm -hmm. and to really help someone. Do you think that you're here for you? Mm. No. No, God didn't leave us here for you. He left us here for the world. Sure. Go ye into all the world and teach them to observe what I taught you, is what Jesus said. Right? And so, and so do you think that this walk is about you? It's not about you. It's about him. Right? And so when, when hurt people come, we should be in a mature, listen, we should be at such a maturity level that, that, that we can handle more. The reason why the reason why we're in this room is because not because of me, but because of us. There's a responsibility on the body, and I'm a part of the body, right? And so it's my responsibility to teach you, but it's your responsibility to respond to the teaching. And I've been telling you for months, repent. I've been telling you for months, read your word. I've been telling you for months, right, to be accountable to your life with God. 
individually. You walk with God one-on-one. -on -one. And so because you walk with God one-on-one, -on -one, somebody's coming that's going to need you, man. Someone's coming that's going to need you. They're going to need to mature you. Your church needs to mature you, right? And so, and so, and so you got to get over yourself so you can get to the point to where you can help somebody else. Fix what's broken. Fix the stuff that's not right. Because when you fix the stuff that's not right, and listen, it's in me. Mike, he's sitting right here. I, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I don't even call him. Hey, PJ. Hey, PJ. What you doing, boy? Hey, I'm just checking on you. You all right? No, I'm not all right. Yeah, I'll go right in. No, I'm not. That happened for a whole year. Am I lying? For a whole year, I'm not right. I got this problem, Mike. I got this issue. He didn't take it to no one else. He didn't take it nowhere. Maybe to his wife. I don't know. But she didn't take it nowhere. I didn't hear, I didn't hear the conversation come back. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But like, like, this is what he's helping me on. And, and then this, this is what he says. We say your name in the morning in prayer. We say your wife's name in the morning in prayer. Like, like this is this like like you should be you should be calling out the family ministries in your prayer, right? Like all of us are going through something, and you got to get to the point where God trusts you with somebody else in this in this building, right? Prayer is a powerful weapon against spiritual warfare. As believers face spiritual battles, the prayers of fellow Christians serves as a shield of protection. Like like I need I need I need I need you. Why am I asked who prays for me, right? Like, like, be specific. Lord, we pray for our pastor that his joy might be full. No, listen, that the enemy stays off his back. That's what I need you to pray for me about, right? That I overcome temptation, right? This is the stuff I need you to pray for me about, right? That, 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 that I live according to God's will or purpose for my life, right? Yeah, yeah this, this is important. This is important. Like, like fight for me. Because I fight for you. Amen. You, you. You might not think so, but I do. I fight for you. Right? And I'm concerned about you. Right? Now I need you to be concerned about each other. This is how this is how this house gets strong. Mm. This is how this is how we get strong. And it's not about the numbers. It's not how many about how many people come. It's about how effective we are. Right? That 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 the enemy says, oh, oh, we 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 need. We either need a stronger uh, uh, war against this church, or we're going we to lead this church on and go on down the street somewhere, right? And, and, and the warfare is for them to keep people away from us, right? Not God saying that you're not responsible with the people that come with you, to you. Amen? Amen. All right, come on. What time is it? Oh, man, that took all my time earlier. Witness to the world. <clears throat> The unity and love displayed through prayer within the church serves a powerful witness to the word, to the world, right? That people start talking about, man, that church pray. That church sticks together. That church is always doing something with each other, right? Like, like, like there's some accountability. Listen, you won't show up for no one else if you don't show up for God. You'll never show up for no one else if you don't show up for God. You got to first show up in that word. That's the first place you got to show up. Like, like, and if you don't understand, it's because you won't spend the time to gain understanding. Yeah. God unlocks understanding. And so because he unlocks understanding, right, is he just going to give it to you because you, you asked for it? Yep. He will. Mm -hmm. The Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it unbreadedly. Like, like, Lord, I don't understand. Show me. And are you willing to tarry there for a while until you get understanding? Or, do, or you don't be a skipper. Don't skip around. Don't, don't, don't hop around. Stay. Stay in that word. Till you gain understanding. Till your life's altered by a scripture. Till it becomes a part of you. Amen. Right? That you begin to live this thing. And do it with power. That's what he said. That's right. Don't move until you do it with power. That's it. So. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof, whereof you heard before the word of the gospel of truth. Right? So, so verse 4, let me give it to you. Ooh, close it. 
Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints, right? For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, right? The word here is where you find hope, where you learn about what is to come, what type of love that is extended to you, right, in the word. Which is coming to you as it is in all the world and bringing forth fruit. Is God still producing fruit in the earth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How? By pruning. <laughs> By pruning, yes. Uh, uh, no, but how? I mean, again. Says? Through the believers. Through the believers. Yeah. Through the believers. Yeah. Yeah. Through the believers. And it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and truth. He says, so from the day that you heard of it, there's an expectation. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody hears the word is the expectation for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone. Yeah. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Which come on to you. Remember where we started. He said, since the day I've heard of your faith. Believers. And your prayer towards the saints. This is where we started, right? Yeah. He said the day that so so who is he talking to? The believers. The believers. believers. Yeah. Not everyone. Right. This is exactly. specific. This is specific instructions for the believer, right? He says, "Which is coming to you." Listen, not only the believer, but these people were mature. Mm -hmm. These people were mature. Like 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 there there was some growth going on. There was some fruit. He says, which is coming to you as it is all the world. It went to all the world, but, but bring a fruit as it do also in you. Mm -hmm. The word goes to the, all the world, mm -hmm. right? But for some reason, there's a lot of fruit being produced in Colossae, right? He says, he says, since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and truth. Like, like, like the day that you hear the gospel, what does the book say? Harden not your heart, mm -hmm. right? Like, like when you hear that word of truth, your, your heart's supposed to be open, and there's some stuff that's supposed to start changing in your life. Immediately, you start bending your will to accept his will. Mm -hmm. Bending my will to accept his will. Breaking myself down to build myself up in him, right? This is, this is what it's about, right? That allowing God to do the work in you so the fruit can come out of your life. Look, look, God is still planting seeds in the earth. The Bible is a book of seeds, and it's still producing Christians. The love of God is still on the earth, and the hope of God sits on his right hand, right? Fruit is being produced continually, and you are God's fruit. But how much seed are you going to drop out of yourself? How much word are you going to get in you to give to someone else, right? This, 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 listen, listen. Discipleship doesn't happen because the pastor's disciple in the whole church. You can disciple anyone, too. Anyone. There's somebody on your job, right, that's been watching you change. There's somebody in your house that's watching you change. There's somebody around you that expects something out of your life. Don't bend. Don't go backwards. Stand still if you got to, but just keep moving forward. Listen, the more you walk with God, the more you read, the more you pray, the more you worship, the more your life is altered, there's somebody that is assigned to your walk, period. Someone is assigned to your walk, and you have to be available to him. <clears throat> Somebody say this. God, God. Trust, me trust me with what you have for me. With what you have for me. That's it. Listen. Listen, fruit is being produced continually. You are God's fruit. You have to look at this as if I'm a byproduct. Listen, my life is a byproduct of Christ's death. My life wow. is a byproduct of his death. I, listen, I'm Christian because this man died. That's why, that's why it's available to me. Heaven is available to me. Listen, eternity is available to, available to me. Check this out. Me overcoming drug dealing. Me overcoming putting coke in my nose. Me overcoming whoremonger. Me overcoming hustling and lying and cheating. Me overcoming Jamal was because a man died. Fruit. Mm. Fruit. And I don't have to struggle with it because of fruit. Amen. Does this make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With this cause. We also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I'm going to go through this and then we're going to stop. And to desire that you may be filled with knowledge. Okay, so that sounds like 
someone pouring into me, right? Is that what that sounds like? Filled with knowledge, mm -hmm. right? If you want to fill something up, you pour into it, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that means God's going to do it. <laughs> huh? Huh? So, so, can anyone say that if they've been a believer for a while and don't know anything more than what they already knew about God? Mm -hmm. Huh? No. You learn something new every day. Yeah. You learn something new about God? Yeah, about God. Okay. I mean, he, he, it's, listen, you, you cannot know everything about him. You, right. you, you have to understand that he... That was he, a bad question. Yeah, that, that is... That was a bad question. You made my question sound bad, I'm Doc. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of pew sitters, though. Huh? A lot of pew sitters. A lot of pew sitters. Yeah. 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 You know, so. What was what, what them things you used to call you put on your table? Coasters. Coasters. A lot of coasters. <coughs> a lot of coasters. Right? But like, like knowledge, wisdom, spiritual understanding. Right? Be, be, because, because check this out. Everyone has discernment, right? Huh? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Spiritual understanding, mm -hmm. right? It, it's important that you understand. This is spiritual understanding. Look, look at this. Knowledge coming to understand something clearly and distinctly, or as true or valid, right? So when he says, "I want you to be filled with all knowledge of His will," yeah. right? So this tells me. This tells me. That God has an expectation of a life that I'm supposed to live, right? Coming to an understanding, something clearly and distinctly, right? This knowledge is distinct knowledge. This is not just this is not just living knowledge. This is this is distinct knowledge. He said, whether it's true or valid, how are you gonna know if you don't test it? How are you gonna know if you don't get into this word and then test it in your life? Mm. There's no way, there's no way to know by just going to church. Most people are in church because they're afraid of hell. Mm. Not, not willing to build a life with God. There's a difference, right? Often with a personal acquaintance that ne necessitates a reaction, right? Listen, this knowledge gain, God wants a reaction to. It. This is the Greek word used. This is the Greek definition. This is not the English definition. This is the Greek definition. And so often with a personal acquaintance that necessitates a reaction, a full, deep, clear knowledge. I know God's will. Because look at look what he said. Knowledge of his will. Knowledge of his will. What is wisdom? Come on. The proper use, of, proper use of knowledge, right? So wisdom is the proper use of knowledge. Check this out. It says God expects some action. What is God's will that we consistently conform to the image of his Christ of Christ? Oh, proper use of knowledge, right? God expects some actions because he has revealed his will for our life. So the action is the wisdom, right? I thought I had a definition in there, but I don't. All right, so listen. Spiritual understanding characterized oh, yeah. by the Holy Spirit. So now, now, now your discernment, is it of God or is it of the world? <laughs> are we talking about the gift of intuition mm. or are we talking about spiritual understanding? Spiritual understanding. See, there's a difference, yeah. right? Because everyone has intuition, right? Everyone has this intellectual faculty of intuition, right? But not everyone has spiritual understanding. And you can't get it without God. You can't get it without time in his word. You can't get it without spending time in prayer and fasting and laboring over in his word, bending to his will. There's no way. Because what happens, every time something comes to a, a, a brace up to your life, that crushes you, you either going to fight back or bend to God's will. Yep. You're either going to fight back, you're going to fight back or bend to his will. And when that happens, that means that you didn't yield to Holy Spirit, you didn't yield to nothing else, you didn't yield to Bible, you didn't yield to nothing, you're ready to fight. That's why you be cussing people out and still going to church. <laughs> and don't, don't tell my pastor. <laughs> Some people be both love. They call you say they say I, No, I, God ain't done with me yet, Pastor. <laughs> see, see, let me tell you something, though. A person that sits there for five, ten years, not willing to bend, not willing yeah. to change, yeah. what you really said is I'm not willing to repent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Ouch. What did I teach you a couple months ago when repentance was? Twin it's a twin of faith, but what is it? What, what changes? Mindset. The mind, yeah. right? And so because the mind changes, mm -hmm. that, that means, that mean, check this out, there's a turning of the mind, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so you can't be hurt by anyone. You can't be uncomfortable by any situation. Mm -hmm. And so because you can't be uncomfortable, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I believe in God, but I'm not willing to repent. Mm. <clears throat> I'm not willing to change for you or God. Ooh. I'm preaching, sir. And so because of that, there's nothing I can do for you. Right. Deal with God. That's where I'm at with it. I'm getting gray. I'm not going to keep chasing you. I, I'm, I'm not. If you're not. If you're not willing to hear my counsel, if you're not willing to take on what I'm supposed to do to guide your life and to serve your life and tell you, yo, you're wrong in this area, you need to stop. And if you're not willing to do that, okay, cool. <laughs> Sick him, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, especially the mature Christian life, and its relation to it with an ability to comprehend spiritual matters or the knowledge apprehended through the spirit. Listen, the person I'm just talking about, not a person, but the idea of that person, when they're alone, they're sorry. Mm -hmm. But because it's so vulnerable and so weak, right? And because they've been through so much, they're not willing to change. And, 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 man, and man, God, man, listen, just because no, just because no one sees it, don't mean God's not right here, mm. right here, mm. right here. The reason why you feel bad is because God's right here, mm. dealing with you, checking you, pushing buttons, telling you no, yeah. and you just keep making all kinds of excuses mm. for yourself, yeah. blaming someone else mm. if they wouldn't have. I can tell you a story. Just one time, I, I was, I was, I was losing my mind, and I was doing something that was that was that was really really bad because of someone else. And this is one of the first times I heard God, and He said, "What about you? Crushed me, crushed me." I immediately screamed. Because he flashed it all to me. He flashed all of it to me. I'm outside, 3 o'clock in the morning. I've been sniffing all kinds of coke. I'm outside, 3 o'clock in the morning in the yard, saying, God, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me. My wife comes outside with a Bible. It's my girlfriend. She comes outside with a Bible. She gives me a Bible. I'm sitting out in the yard. I can't even see nothing. It's black. <laughs> but see, but see, this, this, this is it. He loves us enough to check us. Yes, yes. He loves us enough to get us to this place of spiritual understanding. He loves us enough to break us to where we come to a point to where we yield. This is what it's about. That He loves us enough to break us to get us to a place to where we yield. Because when you when you yield. This is where he begins to fix. When, when, when you're not willing to submit, guess who's there? The devil. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this. Resist the devil. Submit to God. He flees. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil. Submit to God. He flees. So when you're not willing to yield because of your attitude, what do you open the door to? Mm -hmm. The suggester, the button pusher, mm -hmm. right? Hey, you know how we handle this. Tell them. Tell them. Go ahead, tell them. You know what? I ain't going for this no more. And then there's all kinds of uh, Christmas stories. Remember that man who was in the basement of Christmas story? He used to be down in the basement cussing. <laughs> razzle, razzle, it's all that. All that's coming out. And the reason why is because you refuse to bend. You either submit to God. And resist the devil or submit to the devil and resist God. You got a choice to make. Christian, you can't get to knowledge, feel knowledge of his will. You can't get to that without using the knowledge properly. 
You just can't. You can't. You can't get to spiritual understanding and maturity, right, without gaining the knowledge, reading it, living it, wisdom, and you can't get to the understanding of discernment for somebody else's life. Because first the discernment helps you, but then it's, then you're in position for the next person to come. Y'all have a problem. There was this lady when I first started going to church. She, she, she's, she's, um, I think she's Anaya's godmother. She's dead. It was Deacon Jesse's wife. Man, Carmen, man, let me tell you something. If Carmen was alive, I, I wouldn't be talking to you. Carm, man, Carm, she just fixed me. She just fixed the church. She just fixed the church. And if you called her at noon, you couldn't get her till 1 o'clock. You had to catch her before noon because you know what she was doing from noon to one? Every day on her face mm. for us. I called her and she said, Minister Jamal, how you doing? When I left the church and started this church, I came back to her. And, and, and I remember whispering, she had oxygen in her nose. She wasn't even old. She wasn't old. She had oxygen in her nose. And I whispered in her ear and I said, Carm, I love you. And thank you for raising me. She just broke down. She, she broke down crying. And then she died. Like a month later, she was dead. And that's the kind of person that every believer needs. She wasn't the pastor. She was someone that every church needs. <clears throat> And if a church can have multiple cars, <coughs> if a church can have a full of pews of cars, man, the world can the world change the world. Everybody needs that. You, you come to me, you, you, you might not get what you want, but if you come to someone that's full of love and compassion and understanding. And can hear you. That's what the that's what the body needs. But first, you got to get over yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to get to the point where you get over yourself, and you become trustworthy. Because you may not have someone to dump to, but someone may be able to dump to you. Amen. 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 Come on, give God praise. Amen. Come on. Amen. I thought we were gonna finish, but. We, we, we coming back again next week. <laughs> Not finished yet. We can't move on to the rest of job 15 until we finish this. I know, I know this is purpose for you. Because, because Colossians goes back into to walking worthy. Right? Walking worthy of, of the calling that you had. Like, like this, this is important. Right? That I'm producing the life that I say that I am. I say that I'm Christian. Right? And so what does that mean? That means a Christ-like behavior, right? That means learning, having the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? That he loved people, that he, that, that he walked with people, that he taught people. Like, how do you get to that place without this? How do you get to that place? And listen, I'm talking about genuine, authentic understanding of this word and working with God and coming to a place of understanding. Like, none of us in here are children. None of us are kids in here. There's a responsibility that comes along with you saying that I'm a Christian. And we spend so much time trying to fix ourselves that we never get into a place to fix somebody else. And so, and so, and so imagine, imagine, I've been pastoring for what, since 2011. Imagine if I just lollygagged with this thing. I wouldn't have been in a place for the last uh, 13 years, right, helping other people. I would still be in the place of trying to fix myself, right? Or, or, or just, you know, being nonchalant with it. The only reason why I'm entrusted with your life is because he trusted me with his word, right? That's the only reason why that he, that he puts people in his seat. And listen, I'm not talking about everybody who sits in these seats. Because everybody who sits in these seats are not trustworthy. 
But the reason why that, that, that there's no scandals about my life over the last 13 years is because I've been faithful to this word. I've been faithful to God. Someone may say his attitude's a little off, right? He's a little arrogant, right? He's a little arrogant. He, they can say those things, but they can't say nothing when it comes to scandal. That I live this thing, man. Yes, I have flaws. Yes, I have little quirks that people don't like. Okay, we all do. And that's not an excuse. I'm working on it. <laughs> God ain't done with me yet either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the reason why you entrusted, well, well, I've been entrusted with you is because I'm, not, I'm scandal free. This book governs my life. Amen. And when you allow this book to govern your life, God can trust you with more spiritual matters. Amen. Amen? Amen. Come on, now give God praise. Hallelujah. And, and y'all got to learn to stop tapping and open your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 It's uncomfortable, ain't it? No. It's uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. You got to give God praise. He wants the fruit of your lips. Amen? Amen. I don't mind being uncomfortable. Hey. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Hallelujah. I know this is a, a teaching ministry, but but but, but 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 God wants the fruit of your lips. This is this is this is part of relationship. This is a part of relationship building. That you come out of this, out of this uncomfortable place and find comfort in him right to find comfort in god jesus to find comfort in god he that bears much fruit is comfortable in the vineyard amen amen he's comfortable amongst the grapes he's comfortable amongst the pruning he listen i welcome pruning i want more growth my past accomplishments mean nothing that the new life is gone as much as much as I miss that church, the building, the 200 people, that show, as much, it's gone. This is where we are, and this is where we replant. Mm -hmm. This is where we build. Amen? Amen. 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 Like, 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 and, and I can't do it alone. You have, you have a part in this. You are not called members. You're called partners. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, let's go home.